咁第一個 lecture 咧就會由阿 Dr. Wong 誒、呃、講嘅就係誒阿伯即係半個 Nephritis presentation and treatment update。咁啊 ，Dr. Wong 誒係 associate consultant in and specialist in nephrology in 呢個 QEH。咁佢 training 咧就喺誒誒個 postgraduate training 就喺 University of Toronto。咁佢誒有好大嘅 interest 喺 home hemodialysis 啊，佢係呢個 policy maker as well as 一個 frontline worker in home hemodialysis。咁誒，佢、嗯、又寫咗好多 article 關於呢個 renal transplant 啊，同埋 hemodialysis， 喺 local 同 international journal 都有嘅。咁我哋唔阻大家時間誒，我哋請阿阿德富邦。Today, my topic is glomerulophytes presentation and treatment update. Um, Natural glomerulophytes is an important cause of morbidity and mortality in patients of all ages throughout the world. Uh, it is very rare disease, so it is very difficult to perform a very good random mass genome charts to define optimal treatment of many of the specific uh, glomerulophytes. So, GN, uh, for GN itself, uh, usually the presence of some of the glomerulophytes diseases is usually suspected from history. Like family history of Mormon disease, physical examination and from one or more of the following new findings like the hematuria, particularly if their red cells have a dysmorphic appearance or red cell cast, or proteinuria, which may be in the methodic range more than 3.5 grams per day. More patients with a GN present one of the two patterns, methodic or nephritic, that are based on uh, upon the urine sediment and degree of proteinuria. For the nephritic pattern, for the urea that is usually about 3.5 grams per day with uh, hyperlipidemia, edemia, lipidemia, uh, which is a full-blown nephrotic syndrome. Any of the conditions associated with nephrotic pattern can produce a spectrum of disease ranging from asymptomatic proteinuria to full-blown full -blown nephrotic syndrome with marked edemia patients. Some patients with proteinuria and band urine sediment have only mild proteinuria like um, 1, to 2, 1 to 3 grams per day. And most of the cause of diversity can present with some nephrotic range of protein The relative brand sediment seen in the pure nephrotic disorder results from the lack of inflammation cell infiltrating the glomeruli. Because of the general lack of inflammation, patients with nephrotic syndrome usually uh, have a, uh, uh, does not have a nephrotic sediment. And the serum content is usually normal or slightly elevated at uh, presentation. For the nephritic pattern, nephritic urine sediment is characterized by the presence of red cells and occasionally white blood cells with or without red cells or mixed cellular cast and very low degrees of protein urea, ranging from normal protein expression to nephritic range, that is both nephritic and nephrotic. Some of the red cells have, have a dysmorphic appearance and a can process, which are best seen when the urine sediment is examined with face contrast microscopy and are considered diagnostic of glomerular hematuria. When approaching a patient with apparent glomerular disease, the urinalysis, um, GFR, that is the glomerular fusion rate, the degree of proteinuria, patient characteristics such as age, race, um, the present family history of renal disease may help to identify most of the causes of the glomerular. <coughs> However, confirmation by renal biopsy is usually required. This is one of the ways to classify communities according to clinical features. Um, we can concentrate on adult, like uh, say if we have a mild glomerulitis from uh, 15 to 40 years of age, most common is IGA, the uh, free membrane uh, disease, lupus, hitopathy, nephritis, or um, mesangial proliferative glomerulitis. For age greater than 40, maybe more common is IGA, the if a, if a more moderate severe like glomerulitis, um, with dark age, positive glomerulophytes, lupus, or rapidly progressive glomerulophytes, MPGN, or even fibrillic glomerulophytes. For age, quicker than 40 years of age, RPGN has to be considered, and also positive glomerulophytes. Patients with lymphatic syndrome, which is to have a heavy proteinuria uh, and a brain sediment. More commonly, uh, for younger age, it will be uh, focal glomerulophytes. Glomerulosclerosis, mineral change disease, membranous lipography, including lupus, diabetic lipography, post-invasive GM. For those greater than 14 years of age, FSGS, 
membrane CN, diabetic nephropathy, immune change disease, IG therapy, even amyloidosis or other life chain deposition disease can cause a vaccine drop. So um, we come to a renal biopsy, which is uh, we stack a needle, which is an invasive procedure to take um, uh, uh, some kidney tissues that have a potential risk of major bleeding. A renal biopsy is usually just justifies if the information can may alter the medical care of the individual patient. You know, perhaps sometimes it's not considered to be limited to the diagnosis. Diagnosis can be made with a reasonable certainty without histology. For example, in the case of uh, acute liver necrosis in acute renal failure, minimal change disease in young children with lymphatic syndrome, or in uh, diabetic lymphopathy uh, in patients with diabetes mellitus and chronic protein, direct renal failure. However, in most of the scenario, a diagnostic process is needed to confirm the diagnosis and establish the activity, chronicity, and potential reversibility of the underlying disease process. The best measure of the disease severity are renal function, urine potent secretion, histological features such as necrosis, present formation, and disease involvement. The best predictors of the potential reversibility are kidney size and renal function. If kidneys are small, and echogenic on ultrasound, and the function is reduced. Likely low benefits from disease specific therapy with steroids or the submitting agents. If renal size is normal and function is normal or mildly reduced, treatment may be beneficial, particularly if urine output is good. On renal biopsy, coma lymphitis has been described on my microscopy as uh, being focal or diffuse. Focal CN is characterized by information of vascular patients in less than 50% of glomerular on my microscopy. And it's most often um, sedimental, in more than less than 50% of the glomerular trough. For diffuse glomerulophytis, more than 50% of glomerular have inflammatory lesions, which may be sedimental or <coughs> Focal glomerulophytis generally has a less severe presentation, typically characterized by hematuria, sublephotic range of proteinuria, lack of edema, and or only modest reduction in glomerular filtration rate. For lymphatic syndrome or as offensively reduced glomerular filtration rate of primacy in diffuse disease. For carbogenesis of GM, actually most of the causative agents um, are unknown. Many cases, however, are clearly follow infection with a variety of uh, bacteria, particularly lymphatogenic forms of group A immunization to cocci. Infectious agents and um, other stimuli as well induce glomerulophytis by triggering an autoimmune response that results in formation of immune complex deposits in glomerular, or in this is a cell mediated immune response to antigen in or of the glomerulus. Systemic presentations are not uncommon, as frequently occurs in disorders such as SLE and vasculitis. Actually, there is a form of uh, GN, which is acute human nephritis and pulmonary hemorrhage, which is an anterior to few cytospotic or anchor positive vasculitis, are seen in um, vaginal scomatosis and microscopic polyangiitis. Sometimes there is anti uh, GBM or pulmonary basement membrane antibody disease, which is a good partial syndrome. And acute human is complicated by pulmonary edema due to fluid overload, can, can occur in post streptococcus human nephritis. Uh, we can classify the um, GN symptoms in uh, six common forms, like um, just only the urine abnormalities with um, mild to moderate proteinuria, mild to moderate immature, usually the renal function is uh, preserved. Or uh, microscopic hematuria, with, usually with mild proteinuria and more hematuria, and the renal function is largely uh, uh, preserved. preserved. And chronic glomerulitis can have a, a range of polyduria and hematuria. Usually, the renal function is reduced. And rapid progressive glomerulitis RBGN, it can have a polyduria, hematuria, and likely there will be a, a reduced renal function. And acute glomerulitis, that can be polyduria, hematuria, and reduced glomerulitis renal uh, function. The first one some usually have a predominant polyduria and can have a little bit of hematuria and the renal function can, uh, is, can be long or mildly uh, reduced. Another form of um, uh, uh, classification of lymphatic syndrome is a primary or secondary. Primary is like a renal change disease, FSGS, and it's a related to lymphatic, membrane GN, MPGN, IGFRP, or presented GN, 
And the secondary form can be infection like a postrectococcal infection, can be due to medication like a, a penicillamide, even ketopil, and uh, NSAID, can be a systemic disease like SLE, HSP, and purpura, immunosis, can be metabolic disorder like a DM. And uh, for presented TN, um, that with calcification can be due to uh, anti-GBM, antibody-associated disease, immune complex deposition disease, positive immune disease, which uh, usually have a, a circulating anti antibody, can be a combination of both, and can be uh, uh, just a positive immune. And causes of primary progression and due to presented glomeruli can be any of the form I mentioned just now, or can be due to secondary, like an infection, post uh SPE and carditis, can be a systemic disorder like a SLE, good process syndrome, Vaginous gonomatosis, uh, or even can be due to medication like the penicillamide or a fantasy. Um, many of the times, um, the serotonin markers can be used for, to help us to uh, make diagnosis of the GM. Like uh, uh, in the post infectious GM, antibodies to streptococcus can be positive, and there's a low complement level in uh, blood test. For I, actually, I heard there's no serotonin. Uh, uh, Serological markers can help us to, for making the diagnosis. For LPGM, we can check the anti GBM antibody, ANCA, anti NPO, and uh, uh, PRV ANCA antibodies. For SLE, obviously, we can check the double strand DNA, and there's a low complement level. Um, for Hanasana purple, there's no specific serological markers. For microscopic polyandrides, ANCA is positive, can be NPO, against NPO, or PRV. Uh, for vaginal sclerosis, ANCA are most likely. Uh, against an anti PRV. For uh, cryoglobinemia, there's a positive cryoglobins, low C3, there's low commitment level, and uh, can be a hep C induced over the antibody hep C. Um, here is a, a summary of uh, uh, um, which can help us with diagnosis. If the patient has a renal failure, hematuria, hypertension, and edema, we can check the urine. If there's no red cell or Red cell cast of the blood so cell, cell likely is not a glomerular disease. If there is, then likely this is a GN can be primary or secondary. You can check the serotonin markers like C3, ANCA, I just mentioned uh, anti GPN, uh, and, um, even carbogen. And we can have a renal biopsy for the immunofluorescence staining. If uh, there is a glomerular immune complex, uh, which is a granular IF staining with a low complement level. Then we point the bilateral of SLE, post-synthesis GM, uh, SVE, even a graph of linear or MGM. If there's a long OC3 or 4, uh, can do the primary uh, systemic GM like IG level 3 and Hanansen or Purpura. If there's anti-GBM positive, then it's uh, anti-GBM disease. If there's lung involvement, it's good pasture GM. Um, if there's circulating anchor, then uh, if, if C anchor positive, it's uh, resonance gonomatosis, it's P anchor with uh, Asthma and eosinophilia, then stress rousing should be suspected. If there's a granuloma and PA cap, then we can suspect a microscopic polyangiitis or PA. So um, I will take some examples to, uh, uh, for, for the GN. So post inversus GN is the prototype of acute glomerulophitis. That falls infection with a nephrotogenic string of group A shuttle, hemolytic shuttle cocca. After two to three weeks of infection. Most patients show features of acute lymphatic syndrome, including hematuria, proteinuria, and urine sediment, fluid retention, hypertension, and reduced renal function. The urine may be dark in color, and complement abnormalities, including a large reduction in C3 concentration, and in many cases with long C4 subtesting, complement activation primary while the alternative pathway, which is evidence of immune response to streptococcal antigen. And if we take a biopsy, there's a diffuse polyphilic TN by light microscopy with hypercellarity resulting in infiltrating uh, inflammatory cells, we dominate eusophy and polyphilic glomerular cells. With uh, IF staining, we lose a characteristic pattern of deposit of immunoglobulin, IgG, and C3 in a diffuse granular pattern uh, with it in the same gem and glomerular capillary walls. Um, for the E, if you take a EM of the uh, post invasive glomerulitis, the most characteristic feature can be detected in the EM are the dome shaped sub epithelial electronic dense deposits that are referred to as the humps. 
Actually, the pathogenic mechanism of that cause um, these changes are unclear. In the absence of a Q window failure, most patients with uh, both the FSSC and uh, uh, only supportive therapy with anti agent and direct attack to control blood pressure and food retention is little. Over 95% of patients recover spontaneously with uh, return to normal renal function within three to four weeks and with low long term sequelae. Even when the renal failure is severe enough to leave the dialysis, the patient usually can recover. Hematuria may persist uh, three to six years, and up to 20% of the patients with post streptococcal GN saw a transient nephrotic syndrome uh, during the resolution phase of the disease, and there may be an increase in total protein excretion that persists for years. Um, and then I come to talk about the little bit of IGA lymphography. Actually, if there's a high preference um, in Asian countries, and it's probably the most common form of GN worldwide. In 15% of patients, they did the disorder present as a primary renal disease with an abrupt onset of gauze in children, sometimes uh, accompanied by frank pain, um, 24 to 48 hours after an upper respiratory tract or GI viral infection. Protein excretion is increased, but is very in excess of 3.5 gram per day. And renal function is commonly impaired during an acute episode that lasts for a week. In about 30 to 40 percent of patients, are also first suggested by presence of persistent, persistent microscopic hematuria. The diagnosis of IgA therefore is established purely by pathology. This is a renal biopsy with the finding of glomerular IgA deposit, either as the dominant or co-dominant in the goblet on the immunofluorescent microscopy. At present, there is no diagnostic clinical test for IgA therapy. And we can see that um, online microscopy, there is a uh, uh, focal, uh, a dead cell uh, glomerular with focal mesangial cell proliferation and mesangial matrix expansion. And in the fluorescence thing of IG, for IgA cell characteristic of mesangial IgA deposition in the uh, uh, pattern. <coughs> a diagnostic window biopsy may be not be needed for IgA therapy if the patient has a classic history and increased protein and red cells in doing negative serological studies for other types of GM and with a well-preserved renal function. Um, however, if the clinical picture is atypical, renal function or the renal function is significantly reduced, a biopsy sample should be made to confirm the diagnosis. Recent studies only suggest that most patients have an abnormal certain IgA in their problem in IgA probability. This IgA is um, deficient in uh, galactose residues at the hinge region of the immunoglobulin. And the presence of an abnormal IgA molecule is the first of a two-hit process that leads to the inflammatory process of glomerular lesions. A second hit may be the oxidative stress in associated with uh, deposit abnormal IgA. The prognosis of IgA level is variable. Some patients have only a single episode. Others have repeat exacerbation and up to 50% eventually may develop uh, window failure. And predictors of progression include raised serum creatine at time of diagnosis, urine protein excretion exceeding 2 grams per day, male sex, hypertension, sclerotic gomola, or extensive tubal interstitial disease or examination of biopsy sample. Um, for IgA level, treatment is largely symptomatic. Good control of blood pressure and use of ACEI, ACE inhibitors to decrease protein excretion and intragomola pressure are effective in slowing the progression of the disease. For fish oils, um, it was proposed that beneficial for anti-immunity effects include reduction uh, in as chronic acid uh, and cytokine production and changes in membrane fluidity and reduced pain ag aggregation. One randomized control trial has shown that treatment with fish oil provides long-term protection of renal function over six years on follow-up of patients with IgA therapy <coughs> with a clinical clearance of active milk per minute and protein efficiency between 2.5 to 3 grams a day. However, other smaller randomized commercial sold no benefits and a meta-analysis suggests that the available evidence is inconclusive for the role of fish oil in IgA lymphography. So further studies in this area are required before any firm conclusion can be drawn. And for tonsillectomy, a recently published meta-analysis of efficacy of tonsillectomy in IgA lymphography concluded that tonsillectomy alone did not improve the outcome. And given the significant morbidity of the tonsillectomy, there remains a pressing need for a randomized control trial to resolve the uncertainty about 
is flowed in anterior lymphomal vein. Corticosteroids. The benefit of corticosteroid therapy over maximum supportive therapy with a uh, brand angiotensic block K remains controversial. The largest published randomized control trial for meter is so that treatment with corticosteroid reduces protein urea and prevent progression to end stage renal disease over a 10 year period. However, a high dose um, corticosteroid regimen using pulse liver parasol and alternate day oral parasol for six months is felt by many clinicians can co carry a considerable uh, risk of toxicity. And the combination of ACNs and a six month course of oral parasol appear to be beneficial in terms of a reduction in proportion of patients reaching the combined endpoint of doubling of serum creatine or end stage renal disease. And a recent meta analysis of steroid therapy concludes that steroid therapy was associated with a decrease in proteinuria and with a substantially significant reduction in the risk of <coughs> disease in anti therapy. Um, ASAP has so the low benefit on the addition of ASAP to a six months or high dose cortical steroid regimen, either in maintaining renal function or in reducing proteinuria. For cyclophosphamide, um, Randomized control trial involving the use of cyclophosphamide and adrenaline have shown no consistent benefit. For MMF, the evidence of use of MMF is also unclear. A meta analysis revealing, revealing the use of MMF in adrenaline has no certain benefit regarding to reduction of polyurea. However, most of recent reports providing longer follow up data on uh, Chinese patients with mild histological patients did show some benefit in reducing the composite endpoints of doubling of the serum creatine or end stage renal disease. So further trials are ongoing to assess the role of MMF in patients with persistent proteinuria despite maximum uh, random angiotensin blocking. Hopefully, this will clarify the role of MMF in treatment for IgA pathology. Other immunosuppressive agents, uh, there are some preliminary data from long randomized studies of a number of other immunosuppressive and anti immune treated agents like the serum, serumus has been shown to reduce proliferative glomerulations at 12 months compared with the standard therapy using an ACEI extent. So uh, we come to the treatment overview of IGA apology. Supported treatment with any angio uh, any angiotensin block K and tight blood pressure control should be the initial treatment. There remains a subset of patients who have persistent procedure despite uh, such supportive therapy and the quite high risk of progressive disease. There is no consensus whether cortisol or other immunosuppression could mitigate the risk of progression with acceptable toxicity. Uh, we come to FFCS, which is a common pattern of common disease occurring up to 10 to 25 percent adults with idiopathic nephrotic syndrome. And many patients with FFCS have a secondary forms of disease due to genetic abnormalities or the visceral epithelial cells, around diseases like HIV medications, uh, like uh, use of heroin and uh, hyperfiltration of in kidneys with reduced lifelong mass and uh, the work overload, like obesity or just one kidney, remnant kidney. In most patients, FSGS is idiopathic and associated with large amounts of proteinuria and lymphatic syndrome with hyperlipidemia and edema. Typical patients with untreated primary FSGS do not have a spontaneous remission of their lymphatic syndrome and most Progress to renal failure and dialysis over 5 to 20 years from presentation. Although untested against other agents in adults with FSGS, high dose corticosteroid, either daily or every other day with a tapering dose, are considered standard first life therapy for FSGS. Therapy must be continued for uh, 4 to 6 months before the patient is considered to resistant corticosteroid. Those patients with um, steroid resistant disease. Cytosporin has proven effective in reducing the remission of the nephrotic syndrome and preserving the renal function over time in the double blind controlled randomized trial. MMF, cyclophosphamide, and tacolimus have also been used in a variety of other studies. Ritosomine, which is NDCD20 uh, uh, antibody, monoclonal antibody, has been used in small trials of nephrotic patients with FSGS. In several of these studies, some patients with co um, resistant nephrotic syndrome or biopsy documented features have responded to this therapy. A more recent control trial in still is in the FSGS found no benefit in the additional ritosumab in terms of remission or reducing other immunosuppressives. Thus, this agent has been somewhat disappointing in, so far in the treating of FSGS. Uh, then we come to my best lipography. 
I mean, it's a pattern of government that is definitely associated with infectious etiologies like um, or SLE medications with certain tumors, and most are still primary or in the apartment and present with a full, full bone nephrotic syndrome. <coughs> Idiopathic mass nephropathy constitutes around two thirds of all M, uh, uh, MM, and this in the interstitialized world. Most patients have normal renal function at the time of diagnosis, but in those with persistent nephrosis or substantial lumbar pro progress to end stage renal disease. In patients over 65 years of age, excessive charges for underlying tumors. Uh, can include CT scan of the chest, um, upper GI uh, series, uh, colonoscopy, gynecological examination, post examination, and all of which are expensive and time consuming. Thus, may delay the uh, time to start the immunosuppressive therapy. We know survival from the children more than 75%, and there is a spontaneous remission rate between 20 to 30% in men's pathology. In general, older patients, males, and those who with a persistent heavy polyuria are most likely to progress to renal failure, and hence no benefit from the therapy. As the first life therapy, alternative months of uh, corticosteroid therapy and oral cytotoxic therapy, either cytoposamide or coembosy over six months, are tended to achieve both, to both total remission and preservation of renal function. Cardinal inhibitors like cyclosporin and tricholimus have given increased remission of the nephrotic syndrome and improved renal survival as well in uh, controlled trials. MMF has been successful, successfully in inducing uh, remission when compared to the suspected use of cytotoxic, but has not been studied in large randomized trials. Despite these multiple uh, failure options, some patients with compelling condition for therapy fail to respond and need alternative therapy. But those of them are and more, more recently ACT check, both been used in this situation. While two has uh, proven effective in many uh, non randomized trials of um, mammalian patients, and synthetic ACTH has been studied in both antidotal study series and randomized control trial in the public mammalian nephropathy. In a controlled randomized trial um, in nephropathic idiopathic MN patients were randomized to receive a standard regimen of alternative variants of colonoscopy and alkaline agent or ACTH. In the ACTH group, at one half, half of the patient in complete remission. Over one third patients uh, had partial remission and no two treatment failures. Side effects were mild in both groups. While in these studies were done with uh, long acting cemented ACTH in Europe, several recent trials confirmed the efficacy of lateral ACTH in the USA as well. So lateral ACTH has not been studied in a randomized control fraction. Both ritosomal and ACTH, which appeared to be promising in the system and range level, they are currently being evaluated in controlled randomized trial. Uh, for lupus nephritis, over the last few decades, new immunomodulatory agents have emerged as effective induction and maintenance therapies in lupus nephritis. With these options, physicians are able to individualize the treatment regimens in an attempt to maximize uh, clinical benefit and minimize uh, adverse effects. In dust therapy, low dose intravenous cyclophosphamide is um, 500 mg IV um, does have similar efficacy as high dose cyclophosphamide with a lower cumulative drug exposure. MMF is at least as effective as intravenous cyclophosphamide as induction therapy and may have a better side effect profile. MMF and ASAR therapy has largely replaced cyclophosphamide as a maintenance therapy, and cyclosporin and tacolimus may have a role as both induction and maintenance therapy based on limited data. Clinical experience also suggests that vitosomac is a useful therapy in lupus nephritis, although a uh, larger trial did not demonstrate significantly improved renal you know, outcome in patients with resistance to or cool relapse after the first life therapies. And then uh, I would like to talk about a little bit of rapid progressive GN. Patients who have uh, signs and symptoms of GN com accompanied by rapid loss of renal function from days to week, have acute renal failure, associated with extensive more than 50% of congenital questions in renal biopsy are said to have uh, rapid progressive GN. This cause may be followed by any form of the glomerulonephritis, including post-streptococcal GN or IgA nephropathy. And in light microscopy, we can see that a high power light controlling a high power light microscopy showing an active hypercellular crescent containing five in which a bright red appearance. 
And it's really very really, really has led to a uh, fragmentation of glomerular tuff. Um, we can see this is uh, a normal uh, glomerulus in comparison. Most patients who present with these features um, have no office systemic illness, have either any TBM disease or a form of renal vasculitis, generally associated with ANCA antibodies. LPTN is actually a medical emergency, and since the success of therapy depends on how early this, uh, in this disorder uh, treatment is initiated. Anti GBM nephritis may be present with or without pulmonary hem hemorrhage. Pulmonary hemorrhage is a uh, more common in smokers and patients previously exposed to pulmonary toxins, such as hydrocarbons. Patients with acute pulmonary nephritis, pulmonary hemorrhage, and IRP disease are mainly associated with high types of anti GBM in the body. A good pasture syndrome. The diagnosis is confirmed by findings of high titan of secondary IgG antibody to TBM by ELISA or direct immunofluorescent assay or by presence of linear deposits of IgG on the TBM by immunofluorescence in the renal biopsy sample. Because of urgent need for early and accurate diagnosis of RPG, most patients undergo renal biopsy. Although this is uh, intelligent, can be deferred in patients with clinical, clinical examination and high antibody concentrations. So based on renal function to avoid the can be salvaged over 70% of patients treated early in the course of the disease. For the anti-GVM uh, treatment, conventional therapy for the renal lesions includes a uh, pulse steroid followed by high dose oral steroids for several months and plasma exchange daily or, or, or on alternate days until anti-GVM antibodies are no longer detectable, which will uh, lead to two to three weeks time, and cyclophosphamide. Uh, to suppress the further, further antibody production. For renal vascular, the most common type of RPG is a microscopic polyangiitis, involving glomerular capillaries, which occurs in the absence of immune deposits, accompanied by systemic size of vasculitis, and it is then described as microscopic polyangiitis. Most patients have a weak immersion um, like illness and death disease onset of disease, and many have high fever weight loss, anemia, and size of vascular deposits. With uh, midline upper respiratory symptoms, the clinical diagnosis is retinal sclerometosis. If the disorder is converted to kidney, it is covered, classified as an idiopathic presented GN. And then, compared to over 90% of the cases, that may be directed at uh, myeloperosidase, that is M MPO or PNK, in, in most patients with metrospolic and uh, polyangiitis, or protease free or PR free or CNK, in most patients with uh, retinal sclerometosis. However, both uh, clinical and serological overlap can exist. For uh, this kind of renal vasculitis, pulse steroids uh, results in substantial improvement in renal function in about 75% of patients, and this proportion increased to 80 to 85% when the cycle of awesome is added. In contrast, anti GBF disease, a substantial proportion of uh, dialysis development with recent onset of renal vasculitis and normal kidney size recover sufficient renal function to remove off dialysis. <coughs> CYA and mesopressive therapy is generally for six months in remission of course or up to 12 months in resistant cases. So, uh, we come to the end. Patients with bromine lymphatics can be seen with lymphatic or lymphatic pattern. Urine analysis and blood for serial markers can help to make diagnosis. We know biopsy is needed to confirm diagnosis before start of immunosuppressive therapies. And RPGN is a um, medical emergency which we know biopsy to confirm diagnosis and start operation of immediately. So, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wong, for the very precise uh, presentation of the lecture. Uh, is there any question for Dr. Wong? Yes. Uh, okay, okay. Dr. Wong, uh, you say the use of fish, fish oil, is quite sort of fish oil, and the dosage, and how long will it be? I think it's a uh, uh, high dose, but uh, recently, many trials in the so um, this is not, uh, we have very much success in patients. Thank you. Uh, 
。那么他最近就在聽咗一啲嘢，講咗一啲叫 super antigen 嘅 super antigen， 咁係嗰啲 bacteria， 即係好似嗰啲 strap 嗰度可以可以刺激嗰度，即係可以製造一啲 super antigen。咁 super antigen 咧可以整到嗰啲 white white cell 咧會 proliferate， 就即係 hyper proliferate 嘅，即係會咁誒、呃，我唔知係咪有 super antigen， 所以刺激到嗰啲 white cell proliferate。跟住咧就製咗一啲唔係好正常嘅 protein， 誒、呃、cause 喺嗰個誒 renal 誒即係嗰個腎嗰度。咁會唔會通常咧做 renal biopsy 會唔會攞啲誒 spleen 嘅組織嚟睇睇咧 ？spleen spleen 啊 ，spleen 我哋唔會㗎，我我因為呢個可能我唔係話食唔得先，我哋通常。There is no more question. We thank Dr. Wong for his lecture. And the second presentation.